Glory to the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, today the church celebrates the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus. In the Old Testament, no one ever saw the face of God. No one ever touched God. But in the fullness of time, God in the person of Jesus was seen by people, was touched by people. And those who touched him with faith experienced the healing. Those who heard his voice of consolation became the children of God. But those who saw Jesus with merely physical eyes, they, were, they remained in their own blindness of ego, selfishness and sin. In the Old Testament, the three words that describe God is seen in Exodus chapter 34 verse 6. And these three words is the entire description of God throughout the Old Testament books of 46 books. And these three words, when Moses wanted to see the face of God, the Lord made him to stand on a high rock and the Lord covered his eyes with his hand and the glory of the Lord passed before Moses. And the words that came at that time, the Lord, the Lord, the gracious, merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Therefore, the three words which find expression for God in the entire Old Testament, gracious, merciful, abounding in steadfast love. The three Hebrew words for these uh, gracious, merciful and steadfast love is the first one is Hanan. Hanan would mean a mother's bending to pick up a child that is fallen on the ground. Just as the mother bends down to pick up the fallen child and she embraces to her bosom, so also the Lord bends down to pick up the fallen human race to his own heart in the person of Jesus. And that is the meaning of Hana. The second word, the second word that is used for God in the Old Testament is the Ruhamma that would be translated as mercy. But the very word Ruhamma denotes the womb of the mother. Just as in the womb of the mother, God gives, the, the woman gives to the child her own being, her own blood and flesh for the nourishment of the child. So also, the Lord gave his own image and likeness and it is that the Lord created the entire human race. Therefore, the mercy would mean the womb of the mother. Therefore, our God is a wombish God, the merciful God who gives his own being in the person of Jesus Christ, the body and blood of Jesus. Take, eat, take and drink. Therefore, the Lord teaches us that how we must receive his love. Just as the mothers teach the children about self-feeding, so also the Lord invites us to feed ourselves, nourish ourselves with his love. And the third word that describes the nature of God is abounding in steadfast love. Hesed. In the book of Prophet Hosea, we see the Lord speaking to his people in the words, in the imagery of matrimony. I will take you as my wife in mercy. I will take you as my wife in steadfast love. I will take you as my wife in faithfulness. Therefore, the love of the Lord is not dependent on our origin, our race, our nationality. The love of the Lord is constant and eternal for every one of us. He does not love a particular race more than the other. All of us are beloved sons and daughters of God. This expression of God's love is seen in today's first reading in the book of prophet Ezekiel in which the Lord himself says, I will feed my sheep. I will lead them to the grazing land. I will bind the injured. I will search the lost because the shepherds that, have anointed, that I have appointed have not done their duty. They have been selfish and they have been eating the sheep from the pasture. In the second reading, St. Paul tells us that when we were still sinners or enemies of God, Christ died for us and this manifests love of God to each one of us. In the gospel, Jesus speaks to us that there is more joy in heaven than a repented sinner, than the 91 who does not need no repentance. 
that does not mean that there are righteous person in the world. St. Paul writes to in his letter saying, All of us have sinned and fallen short in the glory of God. We are now justified with the grace of God which we receive in the person of Jesus Christ. Therefore, our hearts can become filled with love when we can endure betrayal, human ingratitude, just as Jesus himself endured it. Our heart can be filled with mercy when we encounter injustice, violence, yet we can pray for our enemies. Our heart can be filled with steadfast love when we encounter hatred, rejection of human person, yet we can pray for our enemies, saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Let us pray for such a love in our heart so that Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make our heart like yours. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.